Hi, I am Tammy Neal and I am coming live from Florida. I'm here um, today we're talking about ed camps and um, I know a lot of us have been to them and some of us have helped organize them so um, questions anything like that feel free to jump in and um, share your piece so to speak so um, I organize I've, or, I've I helped organize one at Camp Duval about a year and a half ago I organized at Camp Branford this past spring and I have attended eight that well no nine this one makes my tenth ed camp in the last two years so kind of an ed camp junkie so any other experiences with ed camps in the room yep um, I've done many I've been in ed camp uh, Connecticut organizer now for about I'm going on I think my fourth year okay any um, other yeah, organizers I, or participants? Yeah, I've been an organizer for at Camp Metro DC for three years, along with Matt. Um, and I'm also really interested in at camps in as PD for schools too. Okay. And Zena, yes, we can definitely talk about the online at camps as well, much like this one um, that we're all doing for free. So. Um, this is a unique platform. I really like this platform. Uh, you have to request an account uh, to MIT, um, but um, from what I can gather, um, as long as they can verify that it's for an educational purpose, they're doing they're pretty well opening it up. Um, and Tammy, if people want, um, what worked well in the last session, people can maybe introduce themselves like with their EdCamp experience. I know, like just okay. so we can hear every voice in the room. And I'm Matt Fratt, by the way. I mean ship to DC. Okay. Okay, well, I'm Judy Arts. Um, I'm sorry I didn't put up my Twitter handle, but it's the same as my name. Um, I'll change things around across uh, social media platforms. And I am in Connecticut, where I teach at the University of St. Joseph in a teacher ed program. And um, I do find when I run ed camps, we don't get enough higher ed people there, but we get plenty of K-12. And I'm really psyched that we have one coming up this uh, Friday. Thanks, Tammy. Not a problem. Let's see, who else would like to introduce themselves at this point? I'm Karima. Um, <laughs> I'm from Houston, Texas. I've done uh, quite a few ed camps, um, and I really enjoy them. I did my first ed camp leadership thanks to Matt right here in this hangout because I saw a tweet he tweeted out while I was on vacation in Maryland. So I got to participate in that. I thought it was really cool. Okay. Um, who else? Who's next? Hey guys, I'm Shana. Um, I'm from Houston as well. I am actually from the same district as Karima. Um, and I've done a few camps as well. My very first being Air Camp Houston. Um, and I'm excited to talk about Air Camps in here at an Air Camp. <laughs> <laughs> Any other. Um, Zena, go ahead. I, I'm Zena Brown. I'm here in Atlanta. So I've done a couple of camps. I've done um, a couple of them online. And so I've been with Sarah and following Tammy for a couple years now. I actually work for Kennesaw State University and we're contracted to work with one of the school districts um, here in the, the metro area. So. Thank and hi. That's great. Hi, I'm Jennifer. I'm uh, from north of Toronto, Canada, and uh, I've organized, I work at the district level, so I've organized ed tech days, but very different. Like, so teachers facilitate sessions and people go to the sessions. I've never been to an ed tech camp thing. It's very popular here, maybe, I don't know, but I've, this is my first one. So I'd really be interested in uh, in how to organize it, because it's different than a, a conference, which is where my experience lies. Yes, yeah. it's definitely different than a conference. Anyone I else? I haven't talked much because I'm doing a hangout right now. I'm actually one of the participants, but Tammy's on now. Uh, any I'm other? I'm periscoping this, guys, so ah. just so you know, okay? That's another way to record it, although I do have Camtasia as well. Um, let's see, who else? Samantha, have you introduced yourself? 
No, not yet. Um, my name's Sam. Um, I teach chemistry and AP chemistry um, in Pittsburgh. Um, and this is actually my first ed camp. I've never been to one. I go to like conferences and stuff, but never done an ed camp. So uh, we have now about 150 people doing Google Hangouts throughout the day from a hookup that MIT Media Lab has done for us. So we could, we're doing multiple sessions. We're doing about five or six at a time. So Do you know your live right now? People on. Judy. Um, some we can hear you, Judy. It with uh, Snagit, some with Camtasia. <laughs> Can you mute, Judy? Please listen along. This is what happens. Can you use my own technology? Can you mute us? I think she meant to mute herself. And I think she muted us. Hi, Jeff. That's funny. So let us know how we're doing. If you have questions, try to text them. We'll try to answer them. I'm looking all this on. Judy! Hey, Judy. Can you mute? Please mute. Here. Judy. We're going to make a sign or something. Ew. <laughs> Anybody got a pen? <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you, Judy. She can't hear it. I will mute my microphone. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? That's great app smashing right there. Great app smashing. Um, and... Let's see. Sam, you got all that on Camtasia, right? That was awesome. Yes, I got it all on Camtasia. That was cool. There's nothing going anywhere. Now I have to see the Periscope. Can you share the Periscope link eventually, Judy? <laughs> now she's forgotten to unmute. Uh, Becky, can you introduce yourself and give us your background in ed camps? I'm a high school English teacher, and I'm from Springfield, Illinois, and I have never been. This is my first uh this is my first online ed camp. Uh, we do, I think what someone else said, we do the PD where um, teachers go into another room and people who are interested go and learn from them, but that's not the closest. I've been to an ed camp, but it's all set up in advance. So I am plugging in my computer. Okay. Um, so the district that I'm in actually did provide us the opportunity uh, to earn professional development points for our ed camps. Um, and in Florida, it seems like the local the, the local district that's hosting does provide that opportunity. So, so they so I do earn professional development points towards recertification for the ed camps that I attend. Um, now, if I can just get them to do that for Twitter chats, I'll be all set. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to do anything or report anything out? I've always wondered about that. Um, we had a sign-in sheet that was specific to our district, um, just mm -hmm. like most people do for their in-district professional development. And then we did I did a follow-up Google form that answered the basic questions of what did you learn, who are you going to connect with, you know, Real simple. It was a real simple three-question paragraph format, and um, um, and if, if I don't know if this ever happened where you guys are. So to alleviate that, our district came up with this premise that we'll just have our own ed camp for our teachers, so they can see exactly what can be done. That it is limitless, regardless of where you're from, but so that you feel a little more comfortable with teachers in within our own district and. We had um, like 125 to register, and of course, half showed, um, which was okay. Um, I'm hoping from that with some of my it take buddies um, to actually make it like a tour this year, where we go to campuses that are open to ed camps, and we host many ed camps for teachers and then we post it within our district but that way they can start to get a little more comfortable having those conversations and having the professional development be flipped to where it is catering to what they specifically want and need and versus us standing in front of them sharing what we think that they need everyone gets what they want so that's where we're headed That, that sounds awesome. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Um, sorry about my internet, guys. It flaked out for a second, but we're back and I uh, we are still recording. So I got to pause it and bring it back. Um, 
I don't know if, if how much of what I said got heard before I paused out. But we you had, were talking about the Google form, and then I think that's as far okay. as I heard. Yeah, so once we got the, everybody filled out the Google form, I just documented um, that everybody had done their follow-up that we wanted them to do with the Ed Camp, and I sent the paperwork in, and we got our points. Um, it's a little more difficult for the ones that are out of my district because I actually have to show something that, you know, I have to pick up a schedule or I have to link back to the website or something that shows this is what we talked about. But it's really not that much more difficult. I just have to follow up with it. So they're very open in my district about us finding our own professional development, especially when it's free. So Tumi, and I don't know if we have like a goal or a list of questions with the sessions. I think for me, it's trying to figure out what is sort of the next evolution after ed camp. So in my area, we probably have an ed camp almost every other week. I don't know if we're at a point where we're kind of oversaturated mm -hmm. the process of ed camping, if mm -hmm. you can turn it into a verb. But what do do people feel like, okay, now we need to kind of figure out what the next phase is with ed camps? Um, well, I know here in Florida, um, the, those of us that are organizing Florida Ed Camps, we are starting to join together. We now have a Florida Ed Camp leader and organizers group on, on Google+. Plus, uh, because one of the things we're finding is we want to make sure that Ed Camps aren't on top of one another locally back to back. And we really want to see people feel not feel oversaturated. So somebody in my, you know, my district has one this week. It might not be the best for the neighboring district if they want us to come to theirs to have it the very next weekend. So we're trying to organize a space so that everybody in Florida kind of knows what everybody else is doing. That's what we're trying to do. Um, How, I I've always wondered about that for our local area, kind of setting a network of people and places. And I don't know, part of it seemed people wanting to do what they want to do seems, you know, having too many people do it seems like it's too much. I think part of the fun of it camps is people just can do one if they want. Right. Um, but, you know, it, what it, having a bigger picture in plan is something that seems interesting as well. So, it's, it's yeah, it's just something I've been thinking about too, but not realistically for me. Right. Uh, that's something that I haven't thought about how to do it. Um, you know, we just had Florida, there there were probably eight or nine of us that really worked hard at traveling to every ed camp. And so we would see each other at every ed camp and we went, you know, maybe we should do something so that we know what's going on. And so that's really what where the Google Plus group came from, was that everybody really wanted to help maximize uh, our our ed camp experience and also reduce some of the cost because if we know there's somebody in the area that that's got a spare bedroom, put it out there on the network and that way it helps helps us get there. So yeah, for for what it's worth, like my and I'm wrong about a lot of things and I might be wrong about about this, but my sort of like vision for PD for me in the future is like we, we're all I, everyone in this room is a Twitter all star, right? So we're all doing PD every night for a while, right? And then, like, the next level of PD, um, I feel like is there's probably, like a, like, a, like, a Voxer kind of Google Hangout. So, you know, if Twitter is, like, level one, and then there's this sort of, like, a, a online but voice piece. And then the next level above that, for me, would be, like, ed camps, right? Mm -hmm. So local, in-person. So there's this online piece, and then there's this in-person piece. This free, and, I, you know, we're all, probably everybody here is an ed camp junkie if they're in here. And so, and so there's this ed camp. And me personally, I'm going to try to minimize it, it, the number of paid conferences I go to. Like, I don't, I don't think like ISTE will ever be in danger, right? Because like, we, we, I mean, if I'm ever going to see Kevin Honeycutt, it's going to be once a year, and I want to see him in person, right? It's going to be once a year, and it's going to be at ISTE. If, I'm going to try to minimize sort of like that medium size, you know, conf like, conference that I go to, you know, just because it's expensive. I might have to get a car and a hotel, and it's time. And so I'd like to go to, like, 10 ed camps a year, you know, one Grand Daddy, like, ISTE, and then maybe, like, one medium-sized specialty one, like a, I don't know, like a Periscope conference or something. And that, I would like that to be my 
my my mm. CD repertoire. That would be nice, a Periscope conference, <laughs> or or even a Voxer conference. No clue um, how that would even work, but that would be insane. I think, I think it would be really awesome for Sarah and a group of us to help her organize an EduMatch conference. Yeah. Well, you can have all of those rolled into one. Yes, you can have yes, you, can. you can have the EdCamp, you can have the Periscope, and you can have the Voxer. Oh, my mind is exploding. <laughs> okay, so we do have a couple of people in here that this is their first EdCamp. So let's, let's talk just a minute about what the physical face-to-face -face ed camp, how it differs from what we're doing today. Because it does differ a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. Um, number one, some ed camps have the board laid out and during that first get to know you session, they fill the board right then. Um, so there's no going back and getting session two organized, and there's no going back and getting session three organized. Um, I think one of the things that um, is also great is that this is very definitely not a, none of us have PowerPoints to share, which I think is amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. um, the power of the egg camp is not in somebody bringing in a pre- scheduled, pre-done PowerPoint, Keynote, whatever you want to call, whatever app you want to use, but in us having the conversations. Um, and there's no swag with this one. <laughs> you know, um, which is not, it's not necessarily why we go to ed camps, but, um, but that has a tendency to happen at ed camps. At the end of the day, there's stuff to give away from vendors who who know that they can't be in a set can't lead a session but they want to be represented so any other differences anywhere guys and i i, I need to hush y'all y'all need to talk more than i do okay so can i ask a question like a question in yes. terms of logistics so i organize this i i advertise it and i say okay everyone we're going to have this ed camp come on out and I basically say you could talk about whatever you want to whomever you want. And I would have it maybe in a school and then have a board, you're saying, where people would do what we're doing. They would say, okay, we're going to talk about this in this room. We're going to talk about this in this room. Mm -hmm. What happens if, like, I, I just, again, having organized lots of conferences, you might have places where absolutely no one will go. What happens then? Do they just sort of come back to the main group and pick somewhere else? Do you find that teachers are reluctant to sign up because they don't know what they're going to get when they get there? And my other question is, does it make sense to do it online first before you try a face-to-face -face so that people could know? You're saying no, Shana. No, okay, so, no, so many questions it. would be great. Yeah, online is like the next step. Uh, this type, this unhangout is the. This is like the finale in your aid camp experience. So you're you're looking at it from the reflective end, kind of sort of being here. So imagine this, because when you were talking, I was like, okay, so you have to kind of imagine. So because when I organized it, we had the same questions. My program director had the exact same questions. Who's gonna come? We need to get like two hundred people, two hundred fifty people to sign up for joining. She had like. She had it. <laughs> what I'm doing is I am telescoping the Google Hangout throughout the day. There are numerous Google Hangouts all going on. Not again! I'm going to show you what that looks like right here. Okay. In that window, you can see the. <laughs> oh, she did it. There oh, go. okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yay! Oh, okay. So that's why you don't do okay. online one first. That's right. It. Okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys, point, Matt. Thanks. <laughs> okay, so you guys help me out if I say anything wrong, but just as envision this when you're planning, when you're setting this up. Um, we created a s'more to to kind of puppet within our district. Um, you can go to the Ed Camp Wiki to post it to let every to let others know outside of your district, so you get. A variety of people, some who are experienced ed campers, to attend. Um, the very first thing I did was contacted ed camp um, through the wiki, so that they, because they they send you a little kit from one of the sponsors, and it has little ed camp stickers and such. Um, 
Okay, and so I am back have... periscoping. <laughs> okay. Ah. Good, good, good deal, Judy. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> I don't know. Just try to follow me, Jennifer. Just try to follow me. <laughs> so your teachers show up, and the ones who do, and, and it's okay if it's like a 50% turnout or less. It's okay. Um, I actually think that a larger, like I did, Hack did at ISTE, the larger it becomes a little more complicated. Yes, the egg camp box. Thanks, Chip. So, your teachers show up, have sticky notes and in, in, in Sharpies, and have them to put it on some butcher paper, or we actually used a window um, and made a grid. And you don't have to worry about if they don't attend those sessions or if they're not going to attend because you're going to see the interest. They're not going to be looking to see that uh, maybe I put three things down for Ed Camp. This person put an Ed Camp. That person put an Ed Camp. Somebody else put an Ed Camp. You let them put on the board whatever it is they want to discuss. So instead of you trying to think about what you need to cover or what you want them to learn, let them tell you. They're going to tell you exactly what they want to learn. When they all sit down, then you go up with someone else to help and you kind of put things together based off of what they're interested in. So you know they're going to go to a session because when we did it, it was like six of the same thing numerous times. So we just kind of organized them so that they could attend what they wanted. So once the board is laid out with your sessions for the day, you know, maybe you have four sessions, four rooms, let's say four rooms, Four rooms and you're doing it four times. So you have 16 boxes, right? You lay out the 16 different topics. Sometimes you may have a topic twice, but at a different time because you don't want the rooms to be overfilled, which is more of an issue than not having anyone to attend. And then you let them have at it and you tell them, okay, so go back to the board. You look at the ideas and this is good. Okay, I'm going to go here. And then you just basically step back and watch the conversation unfold. And it happens. It happens. You know, the biggest issue we had is that really people didn't know and there was things they wanted to learn and they thought we were going to just tell them. And no, we're not going to, I didn't walk into the room to tell you, um, tell you what you wanted to learn. You're going to share and figure out as a group how you're going to determine how you're going to learn. You know what I mean? So if I, didn't, if I said her, something yeah. didn't write, you know, let me know or let her know. Or <laughs> that sounds right. I think the only sessions I've ever posted up, and I've gone to a lot of it, camps are things that I just want to hear other people do. I never really present in that way. It's all about just, this, this is what I want to learn, tell me. And that's what's great about it. I approach it very selfishly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the only sessions I ever put up um, is the Twitter 101 session. Because for so many people, that's how they learn about egg camps. But they generally, everybody that knows about Twitter generally brings one or two that don't know about Twitter or want to know more about it. So we get the, the experienced users come in to help. So it's more of a Twitter help session. And, yeah, and be, I, beyond that, I want to learn. Yeah, and I think, Kami, I think you nailed it. And this is so important. I see people, I just went to an egg camp that didn't do this. Like, the first, like, there should be nothing really scripted about an egg camp except... And I think Chip invented this at ours, well, he did it at ours two years ago, is in the first block, there really should be a Twitter 101, because there's going to be, for the next five years, there's going to be 20 people in the room mm -hmm. who either aren't on it or on it and they haven't used it, and and they they really should be, and, and to, to really get a whole, the whole experience. And, so, and, and, and in the little intro piece, there's like a 15-minute intro, like, if you're new... You should go to Twitter 101. You, you, should, you don't have to. No one's going to put a gun in your head, but you should. And that's, that's a really good best practice. In fact, I hope – I've even tried to tell, like, Hadley, like, you should put this in, like, the little how-to one. Like, you should have a Twitter 101. And the, the other piece that I would add is for, for Jennifer, for your, for your first one, like, you should go to an – don't host in a camp first. Like you should go, you should go to one. In fact, bring, you have to have a team. You don't have to, but most people have a team. Take your whole team to one. Take notes, learn, and once you go to one, you're set. And then you know the drill. And it, who cares if it's if it's things mess up? It's supposed to for your first. So just go to one, and then and then do it, and it magic will happen. 
Yeah. The thing that I, I think did one on thing. My, go ahead. Go ahead, Chip. Sorry. Well, the one, I think the Twitter 101 is definitely important. I would say do that. But I think in terms of advertising, one of the struggles that we've had is to tell people this is not a tech conference, but I, because it's Twitter, because it's these it's people who are kind of connected, there's an automatic perception. It might be me as director of technology saying, I'm doing this conference, come to it. People automatically think it's technology, and it's hard to say, no, it's not. So, I mean, we're, we're actually thinking of doing a very specific unplugged one to kind of fight that perception that it's not about technology, it's about everything else. But that can be a hard perception to, to push on people, especially if you're saying, this is Twitter, you should go to it. I still think they should, but, you know, for some people, there's been a lot of resistance, and it's kind of like, I don't want to learn Twitter. I want to do what I want to do, and um, we've gotten that feedback a lot. So I think it's it's kind of a fine line uh, sometimes. Yeah, and one of the things that we did with our board, um, I gave out two different colored sticky notes to everybody. So when they came in, they checked in, everybody got two. One was for the things you wanted to learn about, and one was for things you wanted to share. And I helped them see that there was a difference there. And so I really ran the board. As people brought their sticky notes back, I compared how many people wanted to learn and how many people did I have that were willing to share about that topic and tried to make sure they all understood they needed to go in the same room. Um, and so for our first one, I, the, Ed Camp Branford, I was the only one on my campus who had ever been to an Ed Camp. The only one in my district that had ever been to an ed camp. And so the whole six months leading up to it from the time we decided to have it was me educating everyone around me. And so, Chip, one of the things I get to do now is show them the board from the last ed camp and say, look, most of these sessions had nothing to do with technology. We had a Twitter 101 and we had a Google in the classroom and we had a OneNote. And beyond that, the other... 13 sessions were truly about pedagogy and how we're teaching and blended learning and, and flipped learning and what are we doing and how does that look. And it was an amazing experience because the tech wasn't the thing. It was truly integrated, which was amazing to me. So. Uh, I'll throw out two more. T- so who's gonna, somebody you know? Um, I'll throw out two more tips. Um, one is, and Chip and I, we learned this one way, like, you know, a, a really good ed camp is a half-day ed camp. So, you know, there's sort of two sort of semi-standard formats. There's three before lunch and then lunch and then slam and go home. Or there's two in the morning, lunch, and then two in the afternoon. There's no right way to do it. But if you're nervous about numbers or if people are busy, like that, that because people, some people will leave at lunch sometimes. And so you can't go wrong with the half-day one. Don't feel like you have to have um, a whole day one. And the other thing is, and Chip and I, I don't, I'm terrible about asking people for money. And the whole, like, should there be vendors, shouldn't there be vendors, that's like a whole other discussion. Um, but I, I think if I just got a little bolder, I think we could get somebody to pay for lunch. Um, mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of, vend- like, local vendors. Like, I went to one in Philly, and they got, like, there's always, like, a local, there's always a local vendor that, like, like, for us, it's um, CompuWare. There's, like, a local vendor that, like, is the IT group for, like, your area, and they they want to talk to IT people. And there was a room full of 100 IT people. They'd go bananas to pay for lunch for you guys. So I'm not saying I love vendors in, at camp. It's okay to have a totally vendor-free at camp. But if you want free lunch, it's doable if you're braver than I am. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with putting up a sign that says lunch sponsored by and putting out a bunch of business cards next to it. It's the, that's different than having um, a vendor running a session or running a room the whole day. You know, that's a completely different um, ball of wax, I guess you would say. So, yes, all that swag, those are vendor sponsors. That's what they are. Um, and so my school actually picked up lunch for us, which was pizza. It doesn't even have to be a fancy lunch. Um, and if you're going to have the split two and two, then try to have lunch on campus or on at the school or at the event so that people don't feel the need to leave. Because if they don't have to leave, they'll stay. And that helps you with that afternoon if you're going to do a full day session. And so 45 or 55 minutes is an ideal time if you're going to run like a half day camp, for example. Would you run three 45 minute sessions or is 45 not enough? 
we did 50 minutes with 10 minute passing time, but nobody paid attention to the 10 minute passing time and they made it an hour, which is kind of a problem. But um, it, I think it's usually enough. And worst case, if people want to keep talking about it, they can not go to another session. I mean, that's the other nice thing is that while there is the session board and people do what they want, it really is you do what you want. This is all about your learning. So small groups form, people stay and kind of like do what they want to do, talk what they want to talk about, um, working small groups, it, and that's part of the cool part. I think another cool thing is what we did is we didn't have a lunch provided um, this year. We ended around 1, and then we kind of had like a lunch happy hour, so people went to that, and that was kind of a good continuation. Um, so there's still some like really informal, but connections being made, learning going on, and I think that made it a lot easier for us not having to find someone to get lunch, which is kind of, it, that's, I feel like for me, that's the biggest stressor is how do we get lunch? What do we do about lunch? Um, mm -hmm. And that takes that pressure off completely. And you still have three good sessions of learning, and it's, it's a lot. I, I think the trick is that, that we own our learning during Ed Camp. You know, the power of the two feet. Okay, so I will tell you that one thing that I found, the one downside of being part of the Ed Camp movement, if you so to speak, want to call it that, is it ruins every other conference I've ever been to. <laughs> you know, I now have to sit in the back of the room next to the door in case I've gotten all I need to get and I need to go somewhere else. Um, so it does ruin the conference yeah. experience a little bit. Not a lot, not a lot, but it makes me much more picky about the sessions mm -hmm. I attend at a conference. I'm not just going to go and hear if I walk in and it looks like a pre-canned PowerPoint, I'm going to walk out and find someone that's yes. going to interact with me more because that Tip. is priceless. It Tip. just makes me look more rude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're just more cognizant and you're you're you have ownership of your learning. Um, we hope that kids don't do that. <laughs> but but I mean, it is it has definitely. I'm with you on that. It has definitely made me more cognizant of my learning mm -hmm. and what I want. I call it getting fed. If I'm not being fed, I'm not going to stay. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. <laughs> I had one question, and it kind of stems back to what we are talking about, like giving people credit. Um, I, one of the things that I love with it is it's, it's these people who are coming out on Saturdays, mm -hmm. taking their own time to do learning. And I always wonder about, you know, if we're doing it in the school and it's it is becoming mandatory, like, we're all doing this as a PD, and now I'll take the time to write on the board. I feel like it's a different population of people that are taking their own time on a Saturday than, like, a mandated, you're doing this, um, just get into it and, and, and have good connections. And I, I wonder about that, because I am interested in doing some kind of ed camp at my school, but I don't want to lose that momentum of what the ed camp is really all about. Mm. Um, and I just was wondering what people thought about that. Okay, I'll jump in. I, 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 <laughs> wait, I count, and then you guys can answer. I'll jump in. Um, <laughs> uh, that's something that I am in the same ballpark with you on, Chip. We are looking at the possibility of doing something. Even though it Camp Brantford was district-wide and it was advertised district-wide, it was really more of a school ed camp. And now the district's going, okay, so how do we get this model district-wide? Mm. And so that's something that I'm really thinking carefully about this year is how do we do that? Uh, we had someone show up at our ed camp who had um, some purse strings. And about halfway through the day took me aside and said, I, just, I need to know the names of all the school personnel, all the district people who are here because I'm going to give them a stipend for being here. We didn't know oh, that wow. was going to happen. We did not know that was going to happen. And so the very next wow. day, we had, we out. Um, but the next day, we had people who said, well, if I'd have known we were going to get paid. And my principal very quickly told them, listen, we wanted to know who was here for the learning. And now we know. That's amazing. That brings up something. 
That brings up something that we do. Um, I've been part of organizing Ed Camp Detroit and Ed Camp Oakland University, which is um, in Michigan. And, you know, as teachers, I don't know what states you guys are from, but we have things called sketchies now, where basically we have to pay to get so many credits to do the renewing of your license. Um, the state has allowed us to count um, ed camps as part of those continuing education credits. So we've been able to allow teachers to help go through and help them towards their renewing their certificate. And the nice thing is about it is, you know, they pick their own learning, it's invaluable to them, and it doesn't cost them money because, you know, it's going to be a lot cheaper than, you know, taking a class at a college or going to a conference or something like that. So that's been a really nice thing where the state's been willing to work with, that, uh, with us on that. Here's my worry is that I'm taking a lot of my time to set up an ed camp. I don't want to be benefiting some district running their PD. And that's that's kind of selfish, but I mean, it's a real thing that I'm, I'm thinking about. And I, I want to get more people, and I value it, and I feel like even the people that come will get something out of it, but I do worry about that. Well, I think that's a valid worry, but the bottom line is we do it for the passionate, connected educators that we are. And if, you know, the evil corporation comes in and gets something out of it, well, at least it's still for the good of the teachers. Mm -hmm. I just worry it'll muddle it somehow. But I I, I think it's good. I, I, I just you, I think it is better to get more people involved. I just... Oh, know, definitely. So. But when we do these ed camps, you know, they're... They're cross districts. None of us are, it's not within a district where we get the continuing education credits for it. Um, the one that we do, actually both of these are, are, happen at universities. They don't happen even in a district. I'll just throw out one advertisement. Is there I think Chip started the Google Doc or somebody started the Google Doc. And not everybody has, like, put their Twitter hand. I know I want to follow everybody who's here when this is over. So if you haven't, and it's, I think it's a scroll to the very top. Oh, no, Chip, I think just went through. I see posted. Um, so if, if you haven't signed that or put your little, that'd be great. And then um, two other things I was going to mention was, going back to Tammy's talking about the law of two feet and how, and actually, if, if EdCamp raises the bar of other conferences, presentations, I'm first of all, I think it's awesome. Second thing I'd say is, if you are putting on an EdCamp, like, the reality is we're teachers and we're thoughtful. And we can talk about the law of two feet all we want, but I know for a fact people are very reluctant to walk out on something. However, we, we, there's a few ways to facilitate it. One is uh, be pushy like me, but that's not for everybody. The, the, the two good ways to do it are, are one is, I've seen one, if, you have, if your numbers are small, like 40 or 50, like I've seen one, there's at Camp Arlington, not Texas, Virginia, where, where they had a big library space and they did like four corners. And it was awesome. Because it wasn't the noise wasn't crazy like like um I don't know if anyone went to Hack Ed on conference that noise level was, Shane is nodding thank you Shane I couldn't it was so big and they had the four corners method but they had like what three hundred people and it was too much it was you, you have to have the right yeah. space and the right number of people and Shannon knows what I'm talking about it was just yeah. here yeah it was like okay can we go outside <laughs> thirty people in a circle I didn't I didn't even go I stood in the I stood in the in the hallways and talk to people, which is actually awesome. But but yeah. but anyway, if, if you're going to do like four corners, like you have to have small numbers in a big room to make the sound work. The, if you don't have a big enough room, the other thing, and I don't know how to do this, but like like Chip and I's camp, we had like the worst possible setup because we had like a hallway leading to the front of the room. So if you walk out, like the whole world, if there's any way to like have a back exit or multiple yeah. exits or put people away from the exit. I'm so really serious about this to make people comfortable because people are not going to two feet it if it's not easy. And so if yeah. you can in any way to make the circles of chairs ahead of time away yeah. from the door, right? Well, I'm really serious about this because two of no, you right. not work if you don't make it easy for people. Yeah, yeah. We actually used our professional development center, so we had classrooms, and they had never participated in anything. Where you, the, our PD session, our PD center is like a classroom, but it's like the old school classroom with the rows, you know, like so the teachers are sitting in a classroom that they wouldn't even have in their actual classroom. But when they walked into Ed Camp, we had pushed all the desks back and we had rearranged the desks in circles. So when they went to the room for where they were going to discuss, you know, have their conversations, it was like an awestruck moment because 
okay, so do we just, yeah, you just sit in a circle so that you're facing everyone. And I actually seen it. I didn't see it at ISTE so much. I don't think I did this year. But at our state conference this year, no, 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 no. I'm telling the story. <laughs> at South by Southwest EDU. I had been, it was weird, weird, quick story. We went to TCEA, which is our state conference, technology conference, and they had it, like, tried to cram as many people in this room as humanly possible, and all of the chairs were in rows, you know, like an audience. And then two weeks later, I went to South by Southwest EDU, and every, the rooms were set up, the, the chairs were on the perimeter of the room. All of them in ed camp format. Not not every room, but a lot of rooms. I don't know if any of you have been to South by Southwest EDU, but it was it was very like a utopia, <laughs> and it was but it was awesome because I was like, is this air camp? What's going on? And and they were like, no, we're just we're having conversations. That that entire conference, if you ever get to go to South by Southwest EDU, that entire conference is built on conversations. Yeah. I heard it was bad in vendory. Like it was, they're like no. two vendors for every one person. Is there? I don't know who I heard that from. Not true at all. No. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's not what I got out of that. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. One of the ones that um, we uh, that I went to here, and so I sort of modeled my conference after it. Is it's a conference, but it also has a learning space, which kind of sounds like what the Ed Camp is. So there are these sessions you could sign up for, or there's this space and they have a couple of rooms where you could go and start a conversation about things and I found that to be really really awesome the problem when we had it when I put it in my conference was not a lot of people used it they went to the formal sessions but didn't go to that so there's my worry so I'm really going to connect with a lot of you because I'm so excited to try this and I thank you for your expertise I know we're getting kicked out soon mm -hmm. I think that everybody here who has organized an, an Ed Camp will be more than happy to uh, continue to talk with you as much as possible. Awesome. I'm excited. Yes. So um, I think that this is the type of thing that we need to have more often. Those of us that are organizing Ed Camps really need to have the conversations. We need to talk about the experiences at the Ed Camps we organize and um, try to stay as focused towards the the vision and the motto of Ed Camp as possible and we only do that when we stay together. So um, yes and Julie typed in a great idea don't forget about doing session boards as Google Docs as well that way people can check their device as they go. Yeah, that's one thing we always make sure we do is put out a bit.ly and because I know I've seen it right now here what we're doing is you've got the random Google Docs popping up. If we had that aggregated, I know we'll share it out through Twitter, but if, when you have a virtual session board, so you kind of, we have templates and you kind of catch those, those are, it's really helpful. And hit me up if you want to see my templates later. Reach out to me on Twitter. I have them. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, guys, um, I think that about wraps it up. It was great talking to everyone. I'm sure that we will uh, connect again, and and Chip and Matt and Shana, and you know maybe we need to start a Google Plus group for Ed Camp leaders. Uh, you know something national, something international, so that we can. Just, I I would so agree with that. You know, <laughs> yes. So yes, I am <laughs> that would be awesome. Okay, so, um, you know, I'm a, <laughs> yeah. You have to get pigs. I'm, I'm like paparazzi, so <laughs> this, is okay. my doc this is my PD, so I have a document from my district. Got to prove it, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You all, my, you know what, I'll send you the pig, you might need it. <laughs> okay, so we'll see you guys back in the general session. All right. Awesome. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.